Passwords, the bane of our digital existence. Those few letters, numbers, and hopefully special characters that you conjured up once to sit between you and, well, the digital you that lives in your pocket, on your desk, and up in the cloud. Today on ThreatWire. You've heard it all before, you need a good password. They need to be long, they need to be unique, they need to be something you can actually remember, and you need to use a different one on every site and service that you use. But why? I mean, aside from the obvious you shouldn't use love, sex, secret, or God as your password on every site, what does it matter? What's going on on the back end? I mean, what actually happens in the magic cloud thing when you log in? And why should you care if a service makes headlines involving hashes and paste bins? Well, when you create an account on a modern service, you're typically required to fill out a form including, well, at the very least, a username and a password. And next time you go to log into that service, well, you'll enter those again, and if they match, then, you know, Bob's your uncle, open Sesame, right? So how does the server on this modern web server know that you're actually logging in with, well, today's information that matches what you set up to begin with. Uh, obviously, the password and the username, they need to be stored somewhere, and typically that's in a database, but they're stored in very different ways. Your username, sorry, you're not a unique snowflake. It's not that sensitive. So it's probably just stored in plain text. Your password, on the other hand, that's kind of sensitive, and it should be protected from both internal and external threats. I say that because, you know, just as you don't want crackers to be able to nab a database full of account passwords that are clear as day, you don't want systems administrators, database admins, and other IT folks peeking into credentials, no matter how trustworthy they seem. So the solution is typically what's called a one-way hash. Now, these cryptographic functions are called one-way because they employ complex math that is outside the scope of this, so we'll just call it happy fun time math that makes it pretty simple to take something sensitive like a password and then turn it into something like a hash. Now, it's basically impossible to take the hash and turn it back into the password. That's the whole one-way part of it. So the only way to check that what you entered is what's in the database as your magic hash is to, well, run what you enter through the same function and see if the two hashes line up, right? Makes sense. So good cryptographic algorithms are ones that are really quick to compute, that they don't you know, take too long as you try to actually log in. And uh, furthermore, no two passwords should end up with the same hashes because, well, that would be a collision. You wouldn't want secret or God to come out with the same thing. That would just be no good. Those are terrible passwords anyway. But to take this even further, services use cool things like salts, which basically adds some unique data so that even if the hashed passwords were to be leaked in a data breach, you couldn't just go through every single hash through a, say, a dictionary word, checking to see if they match. This would prevent brute force attacks, which is really nice. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of really bad hashing algorithms out there that were never intended to be used for authentication, but for one reason or another, they've been used. And as computers have gotten faster and cheaper and storage more abundant, it becomes easier and easier to crack passwords with outdated functions. And what's worse is, well, that some services don't even bother hashing passwords at all. Yeah, that's right. They're just stored in plain text, clear as day, just like your username, and it's almost every single day that we see a new post on sites like plaintextdefenders.com publicly shaming organizations for like emailing forgotten passwords to users. And you know, it just emphasizes that in a well-designed system, the service doesn't actually know your password. Simply that the one you entered this time matches the hash in the database, or it doesn't and you don't get to log in. And so here's the actual most unfortunate part about this whole thing, right? Outside of checking every single post on plain effects, uh, plaintextdefenders.com or something of that site, something of that service, there's no good way of knowing what kind of security means a service is actually using when they store the credentials for your account. I mean, sure, don't get me wrong, there's always a privacy policy, but it typically says something like, we're gonna do our best to keep your private info safe. 
or I guess in the case of VTech, it actually says we're not going to do squat because we don't care about hacks, but you know, whatever, lazy. Point is, it's only after a massive data breach do we actually find out if the passwords were stored securely or not. So while it would be nice to have, I don't know, say better data protection laws or something that would let consumers know what types of security practices internet services use, well, you should probably just assume that in the back end at the server somewhere, there's a guy scratching them down on sticky notes and putting them on the monitors of the servers, which is why it's so imperative to use long, complex, memorable, but most importantly, unique passwords on every single site and to change them frequently. And if you're wondering like which sites have already leaked your data, you can check out our friend Troy Hunt's site, haveibeenpwned.com, enter your uh, details, not your password, and uh, find out if yours have been breached. So anyway, what are your thoughts? I want to know, we're talking about passwords here, I want to know if you have some good techniques for smart password practices, and what are you using? Or are you still typing in QWERTY1234 in every online service? Let me know in the comments. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the internet.